So try to focus on the two questions, what were Japan's interests and what were the USA's interests. Japanese interests in World War II were securing territory in Asia. Japan's interests were also securing a steady supply of oil. Japan's interests were ending what Japan perceived to be Western encroachment by the ABCD powers in Asia. Does anybody here know what the ABCD powers are? Sure, I do. What are America, they? Britain, China, and uh, well, that was the Dutch. All of that. A, B, C, D. The, uh, <coughs> you know, uh, the uh, powers, big powers against Japan at that time. Mm -hmm. And they're also worried about Russia. Okay. But the A, B, C, D powers were the main enemies of the West against Japan, as it was perceived. America, Britain, China, and Dutch East Indies or Holland, A, B, C, D. Finally, the Japanese leaders had an interest in securing a new world order through its tripartite alliance. Does anybody here know what the tripartite alliance is? Again, I do very well. Yes? Uh, Tri-party means yeah, Japan, Germany, and Italy. And uh, so uh, it was the, uh, another word for that group well, was Axis, against the allies for the uh, other Western. Excellent, region. excellent. Uh, one thing I didn't uh, address at the beginning of this, which I should have addressed, uh, in my discussion group called the Friday Club Forum, we do not have a Japanese-style lecture, 50, 60 minutes, then Q&A. We have more of a Harvard-style uh, lecture, as I attended Harvard studying about Japan in 93, 94. We like to uh, have speech, seven to 10-minute segments, but the speaker can have the ability to ask questions, or the audience after seven or ten minutes, if there are no questions, can have the ability to interrupt. So if seven minutes goes by and it's just me talking, feel free to interrupt and ask whatever question you want. That's the way we like to do it there. And unless there's an objection here, uh, I'm proposing that we do it that way here as well. In short, these were the Japanese interests, securing territory in Asia, securing a steady supply of oil, ending Western encroachments by the ABCD powers in Asia, and securing a new world order through its tripartite alliance. Now, what were American interests during that critical period of 1940 and 1941? First and foremost, it wanted to stifle Japanese expansion in Asia because it viewed Japanese expansion in Asia as being destabilizing to a peaceful order in Asia. It wanted equality of opportunity concerning trade in Asia. By equality of opportunity, it meant exactly equal potential for trade to be engaged by each of the major powers despite the fact that Japan had the largest navy there, despite the fact that since 1932, 1937, Japan had carved out a huge portion of Manchuria for itself, in spite of the fact that Japanese had the largest army in the area, equality of opportunity. It wanted to secure also sea lanes to protect American possessions and American interests in Asia. Finally, it wanted to neutralize or to nullify the uh, Japanese tripartite alliance dynamism in the European war. Now, what does this mean, this last thing? I think you can all understand stifling expansion, equality of opportunity, 
in securing sea lanes, but the number four one is a little bit more difficult. What do I mean when I'm saying neutralizing or nullifying Japanese tripartite alliance dynamism in the European war? Anybody have any idea? What might I be talking about when I say that? Where? Russia. That's one place? What else? Okay. 1940 and 1941, you had a situation where Russia was close to its last legs. Moscow was surrounded. Leningrad was blockaded. Millions of deaths simply from starvation. The Russian army on its last legs. The only thing the Russians had for an insurance policy was Marshal Zhukov. Who was Marshal Zhukov? Gregory Zhukov. Gregory. Where was he? Well, at that point, as you say, when, when the Germans were coming to Moscow, he was bringing Siberian troops to the defense of Moscow. Well, you're, you're, ahead, you're ahead of things here. He was, he was in the Far East, okay. and he was protecting the Far East against Japan. And Japan had an army called the Kwantung Army. Anyone know what the Kwantung Army was? Yes. What's that? In Japanese, it's a Kantogun. Yes, that's so right. The, uh, well, yeah, army branch in Manchuria. Absolutely. And Zhukov and the Kwantung Army had fought hundreds of minor battles, pitched battles. And Zhukov, to the surprise of the world, held off the Kwantum Army. There were some victories for the Kwantum Army, there were some victories for Zhukov, but the bottom line is Japan, being ever so careful, was just probing, and Zhukov, being ever so careful, was also just defending. Neither side wanted a major conflict, both sides were testing the other. But the Russians, Manchuria and the Siberian border, Well, the Kwantung Army was the Japanese Army. Yeah. Well, uh, okay, Tokyo was testing. Tokyo was testing. The Army wanted to sweep Well, Russia. the Army was divided, and I'm going to get into that, okay. okay? The Japanese Army at the time and the Japanese Navy at the time were divided over this number four issue, neutralizing or nullifying Japanese tripartite alliance dynamism in the European war. Why were they divided? Because you had another situation in Suez, and the smartest Japanese understood that the smart play for Japan was pursuing its interests of getting some oil for itself. And the smartest Japanese knew that there was not much oil in Pearl Harbor, maybe enough oil to fit a few battleships, but the Japanese wanted a whole lot more oil than that they wanted the oil in Suez. They needed the oil in Suez. They had to have the oil in Suez. But the problem is they didn't trust the Germans enough to give the Germans what they needed. The Germans' weak point in Suez was the British Navy. The Germans couldn't quite get through the British Navy. Their army was beating the blazes out of the uh, British Army. But the Navy was stopping the army from completely capturing all of Egypt, all of the Mideast, the Suez, etc., etc., especially the naval air arm, the submarine arm. The German Navy wasn't quite up to handling the, uh, the British Navy in the Suez. Now, the stakes were very high because if the Germans could have done that, defeated the British in the Suez, that would have knocked Britain out of the war, would have taken away their oil, would have forced them to uh, abandon their cities, and it would have put their entire fleet in the hands of the Germans. If the Japanese could be persuaded to help the Germans, which some factions of the German army and German navy were trying to persuade the Japanese to do, then perhaps there could be an encirclement of Russia, Moscow could be attacked from the rear, and surrounded by all sides, just the same way Leningrad had been surrounded and neutralized. With Moscow out of the war, 
that would have knocked Russia out of the war. And the smartest people on both sides understood that this was Japan's smart move. Problem is, the smartest people, as you all very well know, are not always the people in control, are they? Sometimes the political powers that have the control are not always the smartest people. So that is what neutralizing or nullifying Japanese tripartite alliance dynamism in the European war was all about. America understood how close the world order was to changing.